Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real giant homegirl and my daughter-in-law, the beautiful Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are gathered here today to talk Vanderpump Rules and also The Valley. Yes, We're doing it all in one episode because actually there wasn't a whole lot going on with that VPR reunion. No, ma'am. We're going to cover like our major takeaways for that and then we're going to get right into The Valley. Now, before we do all of that, we have to remind you, please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We have bad takes. Mm -hmm. We say bad words. We're bad people. Yeah. And so if you're (laughs) sensitive. You might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. But if you're down and you're ready to party, welcome to this one. Yeah, and if you are down and ready to party, you better oh. be following us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at, okay? That's right. And if you are watching on YouTube, first and foremost, hello, you look lovely today. I'm attracted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm attracted to these So people. attractive. <laughs> Please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us to grow the dumpster. And we're trying to get big out here. I mean, not fat. I'm already fat. Yeah, we don't need and to get she's fatter. very fat. Wow. <laughs> but we're trying to get famous. We are trying so to get famous. So don't forget to do all the social things. Thank you in advance. Thank you. All right. Let's start with VPR. Okay. Reunion part one. Yeah. Did you have any major takeaways, any like overarching thoughts that you'd like to share with these raccoons? I mean, I'm just kind of, I was bored. I mean, it was entertaining a little bit. There was some little tidbits here and there. The end was interesting with mm-hmm. Lala and Katie but I'm just like can I get more last year's three-part reunion was fucking lit yeah every single one was so good and so charged with energy and so it just feels like everybody's so over it like mm-hmm. everybody's just over the show everybody's over all these people especially Sandoval that was my major takeaway pretty much yeah it was kind of mirroring the entire season mm-hmm. though which was pretty boring unfortunately yeah. so it was kind of giving what we are to got yeah my major takeaway, by the way, we have our great Dane Sunshine in She's the room. Hanging. She might pop her head up and yeah. say hi to you. But uh, my major takeaway is like, oh, wow, I hate Lala. Right? I don't know why she feels the need to respond every time a question is asked of somebody else. Yeah. Like Andy will ask a question to, for example, Tom Schwartz. Tom Schwartz will give his answer and then Lala has to give an answer on the other side of the aisle. I'm like, literally nobody is asking you. For real. Your opinion is not necessary Mm -hmm. in every conversation. The main character syndrome was so annoying. I had a hard time watching. Oh, yeah. Her calling herself a truth teller. I'm like, bitch, please shut up. Mm -hmm. Miss me with that. I don't want to hear that from her. She acts like she's got this fucking she's the one with the god complex she's yes. projecting it onto ariana but you're the one with the god complex right. acting like you're so put together mm-hmm. acting like you're the only one who's the voice of reason in this group when you're not like chill out sit that down is a really good point i was watching a clip from the vile files which mm-hmm. is nick vile's podcast and he was actually talking about sheena lala and ariana and he said it way better than i'm about to say it but Apparently, what he's thinking is that Lala and Sheena are so butthurt right now because they spent the entire season really trying to emerge as one of the front runner women Mm. and like to finally get the number one girl in the group kind of action. Mm. And they tried so hard and we saw Lala producing segments, producing moments, producing encounters, but they never quite achieved number one girl in the group. But here's Ariana who doesn't even want to fucking be there. She doesn't even want to try. She's literally just fulfilling her contractual obligations by showing up to film would rather not thank you and she's the number one girl in the group so it's Mm. effortless she doesn't have to try and as hard as those two try they're never going to be her and that's why they're so mad that's such a good point and i've actually seen like lala and sheena kind of talk about this on instagram a little bit like in the comments and everything they're like oh this whole like we're jealous narrative it's such bullshit we're not jealous we're not bitter you guys don't know what you're talking about it's like your behavior Mm -hmm. shows it 
plain as day mm-hmm. because you're not the main girls. Nobody gives a shit about you. Like right. Sheena and Brock sec- sections on this reunion i'm like i do not care are we talking about your intrusive thoughts again oh i mean God. i realize that's a real issue for you and of your course. mental health i mean but we've talked about it i don't to care death, and then we've got to hear your big ass dumb ass <laughs> corny ass husband talk about australia again and the kids that he abandoned right because he hit their mom <laughs> like why are we talking about this again for you've real. got nothing literally nothing. nothing except for how you betrayed ariana oh for sure and even with lala's story of her getting pregnant like uh, the congrats but i don't care like we don't need to hear we don't need to hear about your sperm donor we don't need to see the flashbacks to your sperm donor party like let's just get to the meat of the issue i really hate all of the flashbacks like we were all there during the season we saw this already and you've already flashed back to it four or five times and we got a flashback again it's just filler and that's because to your point it's fucking boring. Yeah. And it's not giving anything. I wonder if they're going to cancel it. I wonder if this is going to be like the final season or something, or if they're just going to do a new cast or Ariana's not going to be on next season. But I'm like, what else are you going to give us? Unless we get another scandal. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I honestly felt that production did the final episode the way that they did at the end with the montage of the entire cast from when they were young, et cetera, as a kind of threat. Mm. Like, if y'all don't get your shit together, and if you don't bring it, we are not coming back. Ooh. And I, I honestly don't think they should, because what we have now is like a corporatized, totally overly produced reality television show that's not real. No. And we have Lala preaching to us with her hypocrisy, and I'm over it. Oh my God, let's get into the Lala okay. and Katie thing, because okay. I was like, what yeah. the fuck is going on here? She's like immediately going off on Katie for, I guess, lying on camera and saying, like, I guess Lala's mad at Katie because Katie was talking shit to her about Ariana, but then acting like her BFF on camera. Is that what it was? That's what I gathered from it. That's what it sounds like. So it feels like there was a time in Katie and Ariana's relationship where Ariana was jet setting. She's off to New York. She's got her brand deal. She's got Dancing with the Stars. She's booked and busy. But at the same time, they are trying to open something about her. They're trying to open the sandwich shop, which leaves Katie left behind to take care of that day to day stuff. And so it sounds like at some point, Katie goes to Lala and she vents about it. And she says in the segment, like, well, yeah, I talked to you because I thought you were a safe space for me to vent. And I didn't want to bring this drama to Ariana because she's already going through so much. I mean, first Scandal, and now she's so busy. Like, I know she doesn't want to hear me vent. Yeah. But I was worried and there were things that were going on. And Lala is trying to, and it feels very planned to me. Like mm. she was just holding this in her back pocket. And now is going to weaponize Katie having an authentic friend moment with Lala against her to try and alienate her away from Ariana, which I think is ultimately what Lala really wants to do is to isolate Ariana. Wow. She doesn't want Ariana to come Ariana to come back because she's the number one girl in the group. I mean, that would make sense. But I also kind of got the sense from Katie. I'm like, maybe she was lying. Like maybe she was talking some shit. Maybe she got called out by Lala. Well, did she lie, though? She seemed she definitely seemed shook yeah and like she probably said something and i think her first impulse was to deny or be like what are you talking about i have no idea but then she kind of regrouped and said well yeah there were some things i said but this is why yeah and by the way she released a statement oh on instagram live not live actually on her stories and i have it And I would like to read this. Now, this is the statement that she gave in response to all this shit that Lala said. She says the following. I'm someone who has suffered from imposter syndrome for as long as I have known myself. Hence why I was apprehensive about opening the sandwich shop on my own. So when Ariana was going through not only a world of hurt, but also getting some amazing opportunities that changed a lot of things during a pivotal time. I was extremely sensitive to what she was going through, but also very supportive. I was also dealing with immense insecurity about what I could take on and simply didn't want to put that on her. Mm. I had an emotional response that didn't feel appropriate bringing to her front door. So I went to where I felt safe or where I thought was safe until I could find the appropriate conversation to have with Ariana, which, by the way, of course, we did. And we have had plenty 
since. Mm, see, that makes sense to me. Because mm-hmm. if you're in a group of friends, like, yeah, you need somebody to kind of off gas all of your shit and mm-hmm. vent out to be like, I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm I'm freaking out about this business and Ariana's in freaking Broadway. What am I doing? So that makes sense. So fuck Lala then. Yeah, fuck Lala. But then there was also something about Katie threatening her work. Yeah. Like, Katie telling Lala, if you're going to come for me and my job, which is something about her, then I'm going to come for your work, clown yeah. ass bitch or something. <laughs> and I'm not sure how it got to that point. Apparently, they were both on a call with production and they were being interviewed about, I think, the season or an episode. And that's kind of the onus for the conversation. But I don't understand what Katie did at what time to threaten Lala I or vice either. versa. Well, because like Lala was saying this was all through DM too. So she was saying it on the slot. And I'm like, okay, but what's the context though? Or was this like a while ago? Was mm-hmm. this like when you guys were fighting at the girls' night? Like what's going on? It just seemed really uncool because I'm like, if Lala is claiming that her and Katie are in this good place and that they've been working on the relationship, why are you dragging all this stuff out? You're doing it on purpose for views. Yes, and I also think she has an agenda against Ariana. I don't think she wants Ariana to come back. I think she's looking for a reason to put Katie on front street and to embarrass her. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Lala probably thinks she's doing her job and she's making good television. But she's Mm -hmm. truly just proving that she's a friend to none of these people. And she'll do pretty much anything to throw you under the bus if it allows her to leverage her position in the group. She's gross. She's high key gross. Oh, totally. And fake as fuck. Mm -hmm. Well, and I thought it was also interesting that earlier in the reunion, Ariana had mentioned that she hadn't seen season 11 at this point. So then in the after shows then, so she's seeing what Lala has been doing all season Mm -hmm. behind her back on top of what she's doing at the reunion. So I'm like, oh, God. Can we talk about that a little bit? What did you think about Ariana admitting that she hadn't watched any of the episodes from the season? I thought that was kind of crazy, but I'm like... I wouldn't have watched it either. But it's her job. I mean, Andy kind of looked at her sideways. Yeah. I mean, it is her job to kind of know what's happening in the season, what people are saying. It's probably her job to have that information before she gets to the reunion so Mm. she can kind of cogently respond to what's been going on. But she can't do that if she didn't watch it. Like, I can understand having been so heavily traumatized and betrayed and like not wanting to go back through the records and see people regurgitating their bullshit about it Mm -hmm. but at the same time this is what you do this is really what you do and andy looked disappointed some of the other cast members were like well of course because you're privileged you know you're entitled what why would you think that you have to actually do your job (sighs) that was the vibe i got from how they were looking at her See, I guess I'm coming from the perspective of like not a business. I'm just like, well, she is a human. So yeah, I wouldn't want to watch that shit either because fuck that. But I see your point. It Mm -hmm. is her job. It's kind of like all season her bitching about how she doesn't want to be around Tom Sandoval. But it's like, it's your contract though. Right. And you knew you were going to have to film season 11 and you knew he was going to be in the group. Like you can't really dictate all of it because you're hot shit. So I get, Mm -hmm. I see both sides of it. But yeah, I thought it was interesting that she mentioned that. But then on the after show, she's watching it, of course, and seeing it. Or hearing about it from the producer. I'm not even sure if Mm. in the after show she has seen the episodes. I think she's being fed questions with context from the producer in the moment. Ooh. So I I think this further kind of supports this idea that Ariana's fucking over it. Yeah. That Vanderpump Rules needs her way more than she needs Vanderpump Rules. But we have to remember that she, Ariana, is actually a really, really hard worker she's got a strong work ethic and if you recall at the astrology party she's the one who told us that at the time of scandoval she only had two thousand doll hairs right. in her bank account she had no money she was almost broke and so that if if i'm ariana i'm thinking about that right i'm like okay well i want to keep vpr because that's how i put my face in front of everybody once a week for half a year and that's how i get these brand deals that are so lucrative right now like i would be thinking a little bit more long term about it but maybe she feels she doesn't need it yeah maybe she's like i'm on broadway bitch that's kind of my vibe with it i I'm think Roxy she don't Hart care on broadway <laughs> right why do i need to sit here with these losers yeah i don't think she cares i think she really does think like i've got all this other shit i got dsw Mm -hmm. i got broadway i got all this other shit i don't need something about her i don't need vpr and all these dummies but you said something about her and so that's curious to me like 
it I kind of fe- I believe Katie mm-hmm. in this kind of sub context that we're talking about when she's getting miffed annoyed and maybe even worried because Ariana's not showing up the way she should be which by the way Tom Sandoval did to Tom Schwartz as well right. for yes. Sch- Schwartz and Sandys like I feel for Katie being worried like okay Ariana we both agree to this I've sunk multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars into this sandwich shop and you're behind on your rent allegedly which mm. is what Lala said Katie had said mm. and you're not here to take care of business yeah which LVP Lisa Vanderpump kind of alludes to as well. Like it's not just a disagree. It's not just codes and stuff like that. There's other kinds of issues that are happening here. And I think what Lisa Vanderpump wants to say is it's Ariana. Mm, That's what I was kind of thinking too. Because when she called them out for something about her, like Katie, of course, is still trying to defend Ariana and defend the whole business and be like, no, it's the red tape. No, it's like really difficult. Lisa, you understand. And Lisa's like, no, it doesn't take a year to have to go through all the code shit. And I kind of the- think it does, though, in I mean, Los Angeles, California. I don't know. If Lisa Vanderpump's opened all these businesses and stuff, I think she kind of probably knows what she's talking about. Like, yeah, I can help you. Or, mm-hmm. like, we can figure it out. But, like, you're not taking the effort or making the effort to do that. You're just using this as an excuse to delay opening. Is right. What she kind so, of was Ariana, you can just go jet set around the country and do all your Hollywood things. Right. I don't know. I mean, I want Ariana to avail herself of all of the opportunities. I mean, sure. this may be the only time in her life that she has all of these. And so she should say yes to every single goddamn one. Right. But I worry about Katie. Me too. And Lala says in the after show, like, I wouldn't want to be in the situation in business with Ariana right now. Absolutely not. Yikes. Uh, yeah, so very, very nuanced and interesting situation. But back to Lala, because yeah. this bitch irritated me the whole time. <laughs> when, the, when she's having the conversation, which she inserts herself into. Again. With Tom Sandoval, when Tom Sandoval is banging on about Raquel and how she's coward and yeah. all of these things. Um, and then we get to the subject of him being a groomer. Mm-hmm. Now, is that because I, I forgot how it was introduced into the reunion. I don't know if Lala brought it up or if they're talking about Raquel on her podcast calling it grooming. Yeah, Sandoval brings it up that Raquel said on her podcast that he groomed her and he's like that's totally bullshit because that alludes to pedophilia and Mm -hmm. then lala was like no actually it doesn't and i'm like girl (laughs) it literally and objectively definition concerns child sa yeah you really can't groom a 20 year 28 year old woman right now there's absolutely the truth that we could talk about with like power differentials and having you know an older more accomplished more powerful man in the group like yes that's true like we can have those but that ain't grooming no and you sound so stupid that you wouldn't have even looked up on wikipedia (laughs) the actual fucking definition (laughs) of grooming and you're going so hard and you're arguing because is that all you came here to do lala is just argue and yell and insert yourself into all these various conversations and topics you're so irritating i know i think she's like trying to live up to season 10 reunion lala where she was on point she was calling sandoval out for Mm -hmm. being a piece of shit she was calling raquel out like she was on fire and crazy but it's like girl you can't bring that same energy to this when you're acting like a fool Mm -hmm. like a total fool, and you're wrong you're totally wrong like you didn't even research it ahead of time Mm -hmm. and you're standing 10 toes down and you are so wrong you look stupid she did you look unregulated emotionally Mm -hmm. you don't know how to shut the fuck up you don't know how to fucking decelerate you don't know how to lower your voice and have an adult conversation i'm actually worried a little bit that you're bringing all these kids into the world right when you pop off like this and you're doing it on national television and you seem to be really proud because like on your amazon lives and on your podcast you say i'm not regretting anything I did this season and I don't regret anything I said during the reunion I don't regret my behavior she's a full-on malignant narcissist in my opinion yeah totally and the fact that she thinks she's right is really crazy and I'm like okay girl you're digging yourself a slow grave Mm -hmm. honestly because you think your business is gonna be fine after that girl Mm -mm. no it ain't Mm -mm. Katie doesn't have to do anything to destroy Mm -hmm. your business right now because you're doing it for yourself that's exactly right and I know you're thinking you can just hop on over to the valley girl but according to Jax Taylor who made some sort of a statement to the press 
He's like, we don't want any of those clowns, those VPR losers over here on the valley. Amazing. <laughs> Which is funny because they are such a shit show on the valley. Yeah. But he's like, we don't want any of them. And again, that is because I do believe they are so pre-produced. Yeah. They are so practiced. They are so self-aware in terms of their reality TV stardom that it would just fuck up the entire thing. Totally. And he's like, and um, I don't want any of that. I say no. <laughs> to which I'm like... <laughs> You don't have the, it's kind of like the authority you have in your bar right. that you don't own, <laughs> that you don't invest in. Like, you really don't have the authority to say no. But yeah. I agree. Oh, I agree too. We don't need them on I the I don't valley. want to see any of them on the valley. No, thank you. Now, back to Sandoval, speaking of malignant narcissists, mm. um, we do have to touch upon him trying to comment and defuse his statements made to the New York Times comparing... Scandaval and the zeitgeist and the sensation of it all with O.J. Simpson yeah. and George Floyd. Yeah. And I think Andy and Lisa, for whatever fucking reason, really wanted to give him the platform to try and get himself out of that bind. Mm -hmm. Because I think when they're when they're filming this reunion, it was pretty recent that he said something like that. I oh, actually yeah. don't know the timeline, but I think it's fresh in everybody's mind. Yeah. And so what did you think about Tom's excuse. He's like, I'm not, well, I, I'm, let me, I always ask you a question, then I answer it. So what do you think? <laughs> well, I mean, he's saying like, I'm not the smartest guy. Like I was trying to explain it in a different way and it got misconstrued and everybody just read the headline. It didn't actually read the article, blah, blah, blah. And then Brock comes to his defense and I'm like, oh my God, all of you shut up. Why is he sitting there? I know. Like Why are you nobody there, needs you. I hate you so much. But then LVP and Andy Cohen trying to like give him the benefit of the doubt being like, well, you were trying to explain, and even Lala, you were trying to mm -hmm. explain it in the context of like, why was my cheating scandal in the news with everything else that was big going on, like George right. Floyd and OJ Simpson. Which wasn't going on at the time. That was no, 2020. I know. Exactly. But like, then he compared it to Ukraine. the Ukraine war yeah. and every like, why am I, are these headlines up there with all of this, which is a fair point. I guess. I mean, but the way that you articulated that was super disrespectful. And this is where Katie comes in and talks about the difference between intention and impact. Right. Like you could have had a totally benign intention that doesn't negate the fact that the impact was wild. Right. And also, I think it's kind of stupid that he's even making this point. Like, why is it such a big deal? You're on a reality show and celebrity gossip and celebrity scandals always blow up in the media, like literally always. Mm -hmm. And you're also a narc who <laughs> wants to be famous. Mm -hmm. You just didn't want to be famous for something bad that you were responsible for. Right. Like, that's the problem. And so now you're throwing a bitch fit because everybody's talking about it and making you feel like a fool because you are a fool and you were dumb and you made a dumb mistake and now you're crying over it like right. I, I don't feel bad for you no. and now you're trying to like backpedal this dumb comment you made in the right. new york times when i'm like just own up to it i mean do what ariana is doing and get some training in pr and uh, learn yeah. how to speak like i'm sure ariana is still filled with venom and vitriol for but you don't sure. catch her in any of these interviews being anything but gracious and kind and to the extent that she's pissed at tom she doesn't talk about him mm -mm. she doesn't mention him and when she's asked hard questions she's so fucking diplomatic i wish she'd be more raw but she knows how to do it mm -hmm. tom sandoval though thinks he's right all the time yep has all of the riz <laughs> and he'll know how to conduct yeah. himself in these various situations. Well, heads up, you don't. You look nope. stupid. And you look dumb in that green blazer. Take it off. I know. Take it off. <laughs> he looks so fucking lame. Well, and even Andy Cohen tells him, like, you should fire your PR team. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, is it really just the PR team? Or is it Tom Sandoval talking out of his ass? Because he thinks that he can do it better. Right. Because he's a narc. That's what I think, personally. Yeah. I feel like the PR team would have been smart enough and been like, don't say anything. Don't do the interview, dumb dumb. Don't at all. Just yeah. keep your stupid mouth shut. He can't stop himself. He no. cannot help it. Well, unless it's the lawsuits that him and Ariana did right. say that they can't say anything about. Although I did kind of like this from him where he was talking about the Raquel lawsuit between him and uh, Ariana. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I think it's pretty fucked up that Raquel's suing Ariana for that revenge porn thing because she had nothing to do with it. And everybody in the group... Mm -hmm. came up to defend Ariana. So I thought that was interesting. Right. But I don't believe a word that he says. Everything I, I hear him say is just false because I think he's trying to pivot an angle mm. in front of the audience. But Probably. I mean, he's right. Yeah. It's stupid. So what did you think of the commentary about Rachel slash Raquel and everybody kind of coming out 
about her and the things that they're saying, uh, she's saying about everybody and blah, blah, blah. I mean. Well, I thought it was <laughs> kind of ballsy that Sandoval calls her a coward because he's mm-hmm. like, well, we both made this mistake. And I'm like, that's honestly like a fair point. Like, I don't know mm-hmm. why Raquel's acting like she's the 100% victim, even mm-hmm. when she was saying shit like me and Ariana weren't friends, like right. we weren't close friends. Like, we all know you're lying. Like, mm-hmm. don't be like that. It just seems like Sandoval attracts these people that are just like him, that are just as shitty as him. Mm-hmm. And now he has to deal with the repercussions of it because he's a 40 something year old loser. Mm-hmm. But he's got a girlfriend now. Yeah. Well, she's a clout goblin who dated Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo apparently. DiCaprio. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And he's proud of that. Oh, yeah. He thinks he's in the same league as that. I know. It's all about his narcissism. Which is crazy. Now, let's talk a little bit, if you would, about the something about her situation. I mean, we don't have to go into it. It's kind of boring. Yeah. But I was just noticing when they were being asked, the girls, Ariana and Katie, were being asked about something about her and they were trying to answer. And then Lisa Vanderpump was inserting her commentary about Penny and about, you know, it's not just codes. I was watching Ariana very closely and Katie. It, to me looks like ariana cannot stand lisa vanderpump and even when lisa vanderpump was talking about pump and how she had to close her doors after 10 years but like if a restaurant is open for 10 years that means it's successful and ariana's like really Mm. like i just am wondering what's going on there what is your vibe 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 check i don't know i'm wondering if lisa also was part of the problem in terms of producing herself for the show and totally lying about everything on the show to give this like false pretense like yeah i'm very successful i've I've got all these kids being very famous and fucking around for a tv show it's really great and everything but i'm gonna tell them what to do and be a judgmental bitch Mm -hmm. i don't know i just thought that was really weird that she's coming after ariana and katie for that meanwhile she's also sucking the dick of sandoval all season Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. like having sympathy for him for no reason propelling this whole sandoval redemption arc like i don't blame katie and ariana either Mm -hmm. i was annoyed with her too yeah she really doesn't contribute anything other Mm -hmm. than misogyny and judgment toward the women yeah and i was just like "Ooh, ariana's sick of you ariana doesn't think she needs you at all and i can just imagine like the times lisa vanderpump is going on and on and on lecturing all of them about their relationships and their businesses ariana's just thinking to herself shut the fuck up you old bitty no just shut the real. fuck up like i'm a 38 year old woman i don't need you to tell me what's going on in my own business which i'm not sharing with you now it does sound like lisa vanderpump put them on to penny like referred penny to them yeah and so lisa might be a little bit butthurt because penny's not getting what lisa might think she deserves that's fair, but i love well no kind of uh, I love Katie and Ariana. They're just like, yeah, it was a mismatch. It's a no-go. It's not happening. Sorry. We don't like you, bitch. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if they're biting their tongues because they've seen what has happened with, you know, Jax Taylor, for example, when he comes toe-to-toe with Lisa Vanderpump. And I know it's Jax Taylor. I know he's wrong. I know he's a total fucking asshole. But it's like <laughs> he gets fired from Van- from right. VPR because he calls Lisa out for being careless and right. shitty. And right. So, of course, the girls are like, Fuck you, Lisa, but not saying it. Yeah, but you can definitely see it on their faces. Totally. Now, is there anything else that happened that was interesting? I didn't have a lot personally. Honestly, that was pretty much it. We did see a preview. Yeah. Looks like we are going to start with the conflict between Lala and Ariana. We hear Ariana saying to Lala, well, I guess because you yell the loudest, you're right or something. Mm calling her out for that yeah um but yeah it was it was kind of a nothing burger i mean there were some interesting tidbits but it was a nothing and it was annoying i was annoyed the entire time me too by lala and also james and brock I, i'm just like are we phasing james out there there really wasn't a lot for him in this season other than his relationship with ali and his sobriety which that's great i'm happy for you but i'm snoring i, don't I know care. i don't care and of course, I hate Brock. Yeah. But like you really could kind of get the feeling versus last reunion when he was warm with a mustache. Oh, amazing. You could just see like something has shifted in the group with James. Totally. He's pretty quiet. Well, yeah. And like, but on the after show, he oh, was a lot more him. entertaining. I love him <laughs> I mean, so much on the after going, show. Yeah. <laughs> he was going into Sandoval and the most extras. And yes. Talking about oh, how God, dumb so and good. corny his band is. I'm like, yes, bring this energy to the reunion. Yeah. And then Brock started defending Tom about something in the after show and he just cut him right off. 
I know. Yeah, anyway, but back to me bashing. <laughs> I love him in the after show. Yeah. Because he is actually the voice of reason. It's yeah. not Lala. It's James. Yeah. Shockingly. I know. I love it, though. All right. Well, any final thoughts before we move on to the valley? I just wanted to pick up. I hope the next two parts gonna, are going to be. I think, this, <laughs> I think in the third... In the third part of the reunion, we're going to have the entire cast watch the final six minutes of the season finale, As which they is didn't live it. when Ariana, who didn't watch the season, is going to see Lala call her God. Like, oh, why does she that, think she's yeah. God? She's going to see what they're saying to her at that party. Yeah. And then we'll get into some maybe deeper stuff. But it's going to be in the third part. It's going to be when yeah. Sandoval cries and puts his hands on his he not crying? I know. Cry more, cry harder. <laughs> For real. Cry baby. Nobody cares. Cornball. For real. All right. Let's get into the valley. All right. 